Hey, what's up, YouTube? Lord Zath bringing you another episode of Zath's Replay Theater. And uh, we have Dear Mr. Frodo 1 again. <laughs> That's right, guys, he sent me another replay. Um, and I do need a Benson replay for ranked battles, so hey, why not? Benson used to be the destroyer of choice in ranked battles tier 8. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be this time around. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about the ship. I'm gonna do my, my typical quick screenshot action here just to get things going. And since there is a Lexington in there, and the Lexington, in my opinion, is just so doggone freaking beautiful, I'm getting a screenshot with the Lexington in the background because I can. Oh. For those of you guys who don't know the replay controls, it, it can be very, very, very frustrating. You're trying to get screenshots and your mouse moves just a little bit. In any case. Um, so let's talk about the, uh, the Benson real quick here. And uh, the, the Benson, the reason why it was the best ship for ranked in tier 8 is because it has the, um, it has, it has a good mixture of torpedoes that reach 9.2 kilometer. It's got really good concealment. It's got um, the ability to, to mount defensive fire with the C-Hall. Um, with the B-Hall, which he's currently running, there are four, or sorry, five guns instead of four. So it's a pretty decent gunboat. It pretty much is a good jack-of-all-trades destroyer. It also has the American smoke, which is really, really good for smoking up your team. Now, that uh, utility has declined slightly as a, as a result, I should say, of the change in smoke mechanics. If you smoke up a battleship, that battleship fires, that battleship is then spotted for 20 seconds. Um, and some cruisers too, and even destroyers depending on the distance. So, the smoke utility is no longer quite as strong as it used to be. Now let's take a look at the matchmaking. Um, we've got Benson, 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 they cancel. Kid is basically Benson, well it's more like Fletcher, uh, with a heel, so that's a very strong ship. Akizuki versus Kagura. Akizuki is probably the better gunboat, and the Kagura, of course, good torpedo boat, can use gun power. Kiev versus Loyang. Loyang's got the hydro. Kiev, of course, has the gunboat ability. And you can see here we've got Lexington versus Lexington. Now, the Lexington has, I believe, at this time, the lowest win rate of all uh, carriers in ranked. So, um, the nice thing about this battle is, well, some, one of them's gonna win, one of them's gonna lose. <laughs> so, um, that'll, get, that'll get the stats closer to 50%, I suppose. Now, I'm gonna pause for a second, because there's a lot that's kind of been going on, and I haven't... I haven't been commenting on it, um, and maybe I should. So let's talk flags. Good flag setup. Um, flood chance, fire chance, speed, consumable reload, anti-debt, and fire chance. Basically, all the flags you would want to run in ranked with proper camo. So Frodo is doing a nice job with that situation. Let's talk about position. What the bleep is everybody doing? Look at this. I was just in a battle today. Same thing happened. All the destroyers went to the same spot. Um, public service announcement. If you're in a destroyer, you do not, I repeat, not go to the same place as all the other freaking destroyers. Um, what basically happens is they know where all of you are. They can go cap the other capture point because guess what? It's not contested. Oh, look, C actually is being capped. Oh, look, B is being capped. There's nobody contesting it. A is even being capped. I, I mean, th that's just unbelievable. So, um, Frodo, I know you're just one of the destroyers, but man, if you see that at the start, say something, you know, like go into chat and be like, guys, let's, uh, you know, blah, blah, um, they'll either listen to you or they'll dig their heels in and, you know, and, uh, be even, uh, more of a, of a donkey. So, um, honestly, it's, it's up to them. Now, your positioning right now, um, you got detected by the planes obviously every all the destroyers have kind of worked together i'm pretty sure that ice captain is using his defensive fire um all that good stuff uh, 
I would suggest you, or maybe the Benson in front, should have been using their smoke. Uh, the last thing you want is for this Alabama to send in a, a world of hurt on you or any of the other destroyers. Um, there is a fighter there that is spotting the planes, so, I, I mean, it sucks losing that, um, that smoke charge, but it, it actually might come in handy, because then you've got the ability to, um, you know, not take uh, fire for a little bit longer. Um, now, this poor Amagi is totally left out to dry. Same thing with the Lexington. Both of them are going to be chasing after you guys. Um, the reason why this is really bad is if you push around, the Alabama's there. He's just going to blap you guys. Um, if you go into the channel, well, they just torp the channel. All right? Uh, and then, of course, Ccap here, they're flanking. So this is a really bad position, in my opinion, to be in. I don't know what, what the plan is here. We're going to resume play and watch what happens. Fortunately, your Lexington is doing a nice job of defending your destroyer group. And it looks like that Lexington is winning the air war, um, which is very, very handy. Now, don't forget to turn off your anti-air once you are no longer detected. And you did that. Good job. Now, you are still detected, so there's a... Oh my god, they're Lexington. Okay, well... Oh no. You can do it! You can do it, I believe! Alright, good. Um, wow. So, you're no longer detected. Now, notice... Pause. This is something else that other people don't don't get that much. Um, Frodo is, is running radio location. Okay, you just saw that it shifted. It looked like it was looking at Alabama and then it shifted to the right. So that should be telling Frodo and maybe anybody else running it that there's a destroyer that's closer to them than the Alabama. So the Alabama, so the, the, the destroyer is probably over here. Let, let's see. Okay, so the destroyer is like right here, which makes sense. If you saw those torpedoes that came in, the destroyer probably went like this, sent torpedoes and then turned away. Now, we'll have to see if it shifts back to the Alabama that tells Frodo that that destroyer is indeed running away. And why is that important? Because it means that he, and this Kiev is turning around, he shouldn't be, um, he and the other destroyers have almost a clear shot at torping the Alabama and maybe even shooting down the Lexington, um, which is kind of interesting. Definitely not what I would recommend, but hey, at this point, what else are you going to do, right? You guys are kind of... Uh, spread out <laughs> just a little so let's see and there's the Kagero as predicted now this is kind of interesting you guys are in the position to where you can gun down um, that Kagero and it's unfortunate that Akizuki is where he is because you could have fired torpedoes into the uh, channel but you weren't able to that's all right. Lexington has realized that he is about to get screwed, and so he's running away. And this Alabama, boy, this Alabama, he's doing the bow on Alabama thing, but you can't. Um, notice the smoke. Notice the smoke over here. It's probably the low yang, which means that your smoke will not matter because you will simply be hydroed. At least that's my prediction. Let's see what happens. Okay, Alabama is running. Good. Send in front. Send in front. I'll go farther to the. Well, yeah, you could. I would have. I would have gone farther to the left, because you you never know, right? You might catch this other guy out. Um, fortunately, the torpedo bombers are going for your Benson over there um, because he didn't smoke up. And let's see if you'll hit this Alabama. You'll notice that you kind of stacked your torps one on top of the other. Um, so you you really have to hope that the Alabama, yeah. Oh! <laughs> what is a Lo Yang doing without Hydro? Wow, that was incredibly dumb on the Lo Yang's part there. Um, you better move. Book it, book it, book it. Oh, you got lucky there. He shot at uh, where he thought you were. He hit you once, but that's not a big deal because he did not have that um, bonus to. Um, to his dispersion. Keeve takes out the Benson. Look at that Keeve. Look at this guy. He just comes right in like a boss. He doesn't care. He's just coming in and torping the crap out of everything. That's awesome.
Yeah, Kiev goes down. Kind of predictable, considering what's going on. That carrier is really, really doing a good job of keeping you guys all spotted. Fortunately, you had that Akizuki with you with decent anti-air capabilities. All right, so uh, the Akizuki with a um, somewhat inappropriate in-game name is uh, Charging A. We're gonna we're gonna leave Frodo behind a little bit because Frodo's kind of in a position now where he's not gonna do too much, and we're gonna watch um, the Akizuki here now. Akizuki, this guy has AP loaded, which is smart uh, because his guns do a good amount of penetration damage. As you can see, Harry Penis has penetrated the Benson. I just had to say that. Um, and Sit Me Harder has killed um, the kid. So that um, that additional heal is meaningless. And uh, Ice Captain is being a little uh, little salty about that. Now, Harry Penis takes it on the tip. And those torpedoes that were dodged are coming your way, Frodo. Frodo's fine. Now, at this point, let's pause and see what's going on. The Alabama is basically putting himself in a position to just get nuked hard. Um, maybe that's why he made his username that way. Because all he's doing is literally sailing about with an Amagi that's got cross shots, an Akizuki that's got cross shots, and a Benson in behind the Amagi for torpedo cross shots. In the meantime, these two are heading straight to the Benson and they will most likely nuke it. So, here's a wonderful example of a game where you guys really started off kind of doing all the wrong things. But the enemy team did even more wrong things, so it's okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else I can better describe this this level of, of craziness here. Alright, so Frodo, you're getting back into the swing of things, which makes sense. And, um... There goes Torps on the Bama. Here comes Torpedo Bombers. You got spotted, and that Bama hurt you hard. And you're turning. Don't turn. Don't turn. Don't. Oh, okay, good. You saved it. Whew. Good idea. Smoking up and slowing down because the last thing you want to do is get shot at again by the North Carolina. North Carolina took Torp, so his DCP is most likely down. Oh, and this is this is what us. We're we're gonna drop the HUD and we're just gonna watch this beautiful Torp strike nail this poor Alabama. Sit me harder. Should have changed his name to Torp me harder because he gone. Indeed, enemy battleships sunk. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you do not sail into the cap with a destroy with a battleship and a whole bunch of destroyers all around you. And now all they have to do is is play cleanup. Bad. I almost wonder if the Lexington is taking AP bombs. Uh, you can see that there, Benson is looking at the situation, and you can probably tell what's going on in his mind, right? What the hell did my team do? <laughs> because boy, did they throw away a, a massive advantage. Now, Frodo is being smart here by not DCPing because he figures there's probably more bombs coming in. The bombs miss. LOL. I don't agree, though, with turning back in like this. You're going right back into his torpedo arcs. You know that the Kagero, if he's going to torp, he's going to torp this way. And you're sailing right back to where that Kagero is going to torpedo. So just, just a thought there. Um, you got lucky, in a sense, because the torpedoes... It looks like um, the Kagero hit the torps on the Amagi Benson instead. But... Um, always be thinking about that because you just don't know. Oh, Benton took a big dive bomb from Lexington. I love Lexington so much. Anyway, um, Benton and Akizuki are coming in to support 
Proto, the Amagi goes down. Oh well. Um, now this is also a this is also kind of a dumb idea, Frodo. Um, you're, you've got 30 seconds left on your smoke, and you're charging the capture point with the destroyer nearby, with, with planes nearby, and you're the closest person. Which means, guess what? They're gonna focus up, you know, on you. And surprise, surprise, you got focused. Now, luckily for you, that carrier is gonna ruin the Kagero's day. Boink. Um, so, you know, you, you got lucky here, but there's just no point. At that point, I would have slowed down at that spot there, backed up even. Let the frickin' Akizuki go in front of you. Look at the Akizuki and his health, right? He's got enough damage. He can get focused for a little bit. That's perfectly fine. Let them shoot him. It's all good, right? Um, your, your primary mission, especially in a destroyer, in a competitive environment, you need to spot people, you need to stay alive, and I would reverse that, I would say staying alive is number one, spotting people number two, number three is getting capture points. A lot of people think it's it's like capture points first, then spot, then stay alive. If you die, you give, you, you basically can't help your team at all, and this goes for any ship whatsoever, right? Um, how is it so easy to see? Because there's carriers, the carriers spot torpedoes. Nice dodge once again. I have a strong feeling this guy is using AP bombs. Yeah, you you should have died, right? You should have died a long time ago. Um, so it happens. Regardless, um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this and take a take another screenshot here because this is kind of cool angle looking back. Akizuki with you and the other destroyer maybe in the background. See if I can get this to happen. Um, good game. I did like um, the uh, the teamwork that you guys displayed. Even though all the destroyers went to the same place, you guys were able to capitalize on the mistakes of the enemy, and I think that's really, really important. That Lexington's not even using camo. Anyway, um, so 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 yeah. I also noticed you didn't run premium speed boost. If you want to, that might be a good idea, just because it gets you the ability to move about the battlefield a little bit quicker, um, to redeploy, reposition as needed, that sort of thing. I think that, uh, I mean, it would help you chase down the Lexington here for damage, sure, but it would allow you to um, get into more advantageous positions quicker. Carrier is doing one last desperate attempt to do something meaningful and failing. Now, I don't know if that carrier had AP bombs or not, but if the carrier did have AP bombs, well, then um, he probably should have gone for the Amagi. I don't, I don't understand what he was doing with his bombers. And at this point, that's all she wrote. Now, you can tell you're also using, um, <laughs> high caliber, nice. You saved your star, sir. Uh, you can see, too, look at his reload. His reload is so short because he's got adrenaline rush. Very good skill to have for destroyers. All right. Well, dear Mr. Frodo, thank you for sending in the replay. Um, you know, like I said, I think communicating with the team, far, far important, especially at the beginning of the match there. Um... You definitely want to, to make sure that everybody kind of knows what's going on. Other than that, um, the other thing would be don't put yourself in as much danger uh, and risk um, if you can help it. You got really lucky with that low yang that for whatever reason didn't use hydro. My guess is what that low yang did was went into B cap, smoked up, hit Hydro, and basically said, I win the cap, nobody gets here, right? Because his Hydro's got the ability to lock it down. He won the cap, right? Uh, but then his Hydro was down, and he kind of made the same mistake that you did earlier. He went in and charged without the consumable um, available to back him up. He should have stayed behind the island until his Hydro was available, even though you're in smoke. Um, and he also, he also should have known that you would be torping 
that uh, that Alabama, and for whatever reason, he didn't think that you would, and he jumped into that crossfire. Again, that's what you kind of did with that Kagero. You could have gotten torqued from that Kagero through the channel. You got lucky um, both times there, and the Lo Yang did not get lucky, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, work more on um, conserving your hit points and... Um, learning that right balance. And I know it's tough. It's easy to say, oh, we've, we've won the game. Um, now it's just chasing down damage. The problem is um, that's that's when games get thrown. And I had a couple games get thrown yesterday that uh, were clear wins. Um, but for whatever reason, the team just kind of let it happen. Um, so it is what it is. So, dear Mr. Photo, thank you. Uh, and the rest of you guys, thanks for watching. As always, comment, like, subscribe, do the usual YouTube crap. Uh, send me replays. I'm looking for ranked battles. I'm looking for any ship, although I'm trying to uh, feature one battle of each type of ship. Hey, look, it's Dear Mr. Frodo. And, um, you know, I I'm trying to uh, find ways to, to showcase um, any ship in rank, because I, I really do believe any ship is viable. Um, so with that being said, if there's a specific ship that you would like to see in ranked battles, let me know. And um, I, will, I will put the word out that I'm looking for a replay like that. If you're struggling at ranked and you don't know why, send me a replay. That's really important. I'm not looking for all the, the best of the best of the best replays. I'm not looking for all the wins and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking for ways that I can help give you guys feedback um, to improve your gameplay so that ranked battles goes a little bit easier for you. All right. Uh, so once again, thanks at all. Uh, thanks everyone for watching, and have a great day.